The gymnastic strings are one of the most effective and versatile tools for training the upper body. They offer a complete blend of push and pull, straight and bent arm, static and dynamic movements, giving a freedom of flow that no other equipment can provide. Though simple in appearance, trying the apparatus for the first time may feel surprisingly difficult. All those exercises that you're used to crushing on the floor or bar may now feel way harder. That extra component of instability really steepens the learning curve and can act as a deterrent for learning the rings. However, if you can put in the effort to build a good foundation, you'll soon start unlocking doors to this amazing workout. This video is designed to help you get started on the rings. We'll go over a proper setup, stable body positioning, and some beginner exercises. Before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I've known about this company for over 10 years and have recently used their services to help design and build my own website. Creating a website has always seemed like a daunting task, but Squarespace has made it a simple and intuitive experience. If you have a hobby or passion that you're looking to share with the world, check out what Squarespace has to offer. A good setup is crucial for getting an effective workout from the rings. Here's a checklist of what you need to do. 1. Find a sturdy and level branch or bar. 2. Toss the buckles over so that they're facing the outside. This will make adjusting the straps a lot easier. 3. Make sure your rings are even. This is often overlooked and can make the difference between a good workout and one that could potentially lead to injury. 4. Keep rings at shoulder width. Another overlooked aspect. The majority of rings exercises are done with hands at shoulder width, and it makes no sense to spend extra effort pulling the rings inward toward your body. Also, it's not good for the straps. 5. Ring height. The general all-purpose height for an outdoor ring setup is high enough to hang with bent knees and low enough from the anchor to clear your head in the top position. With some of the exercises we'll be covering later, the rings will be brought down to a lower height. 6. Tuck in the excess straps and clear it out of the way. This eliminates the distraction of dangling straps, making a big difference in improving your focus and concentration. One of the biggest challenges with rings is keeping your body steady. With floor and bar exercises, we've gotten accustomed to moving off of fixed points that are inherently stable. On the rings, we have to rely on our bodies to actively stabilize. There are three things we can do to maximize our stability on rings. One, keeping elbows tight by our sides. This maximizes our leverage in all pushing and pulling movements. Two, keeping the hands close to the line of the body. This allows you to more effectively maneuver your body around the rings. And three, gripping the rings with a neutral vertical alignment for most exercises. Our arms are naturally vertically aligned with palms facing toward each other and thumbs in the up position. Rotating your arms to either a pronated or supinated grip actually requires a little bit of energy and depending on the exercise, takes leverage away from your body. For this exercise, it's best to have rings set around shoulder height. Grip the rings while standing between them. Jump while bringing the elbows and rings close to the body, finishing at the top of a dip position with straight arms. This is the fundamental starting point for most gymnastics rings movements, so it's very important to become comfortable in this position. Work your way up to a 30 second hold and slowly lower yourself down with a negative dip. If you want to add a challenge, externally rotate your arms in support position with rings turned out. You'll feel the load shift into your biceps. This is a great exercise for developing pulling ability and is best done with rings set at hip height. Get into position by extending your feet out in front of you, keeping the rings level with your chest. Initiate the movement by retracting the scapula and then pulling the rings towards you. Let the hands naturally rotate to vertical alignment and finish the movement with elbows tight by your sides. 
Slowly extend back to starting position, ending with your shoulder blades protracted before starting the next rep. Work your way up to 3 sets of 10 reps. This exercise is most effective with rings set low. If you run out of strap, you can always use a bench or chair to elevate the feet. When performing this movement, it's important to keep the elbows in tight and grip with a neutral vertical alignment. Having a pronated or palms down grip will cause you to flare out your elbows, while using a supinated or palms up grip redirects the leverage into your biceps, creating a much more advanced movement. Maintain tension in your body by adopting a posterior pelvic tilt. Perform up to 3 sets of 10 reps. If you're able to do pull-ups or chin-ups on bar, transitioning over to rings won't be very difficult. There's a slight bit of instability, but you won't have to fight to keep the rings from going inward or outward. When doing pull-ups or chin-ups, it's important to keep the elbows tight and initiate the movement from your shoulder blades. Depress the scapula, then retract and pull, making sure to pin the elbows down and in at top position. The great thing about rings is that you can rotate your grip without having to remove your hands. This gives you the freedom to alternate between pull-ups and chin-ups in the same set. Work up to three sets of six to eight repetitions. The tuck sit is a great precursor to the L sit and more advanced core based exercises. It can be done either static or dynamic from a support or hanging position. From the basic support position, tuck your knees towards your chest and hold. Work up to 10 seconds. In hanging position, you can do the tuck sit for reps, making sure to control the movement throughout its entire range. Work up to 10 reps. This last exercise is one of the best for building shoulder strength and mobility. It's also an important prerequisite for several more advanced movements. This is best done with rings set at shoulder height. Holding the rings with a pronated grip, lower down into a crouch with your feet slightly in front of you. Using a small hop, tuck your knees to your chest, elevate your hips, and tilt your head back. Allow yourself to go upside down into a tuck position and continue the rotation of your hips so that they move behind your shoulders. Spot your landing and let your feet gently touch down on the floor. From this position, sink down slightly and hop to assist you out of the position. You will reverse the motion and unwind back to the starting position, allowing your feet to gently touch down in front of you. Remember to keep an active grip during the entire movement and engage your core and scapula to gently lower into each of the end positions. Perform up to three sets of five reps. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it gave you some insight and inspiration to pick up a pair of rings and play around a bit. If you're interested in which rings I use and recommend, there's a link in the video description. I want to once again thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a great service to create your website, head to squarespace.com forward slash movement for climbers and save 10% off your first purchase. Until next time, move better, climb harder.